And I want to welcome everyone to this edition of the Public Good App House. We'll be showcasing tech for your nonprofit to unlock the power of location-based data. So the Public Good App House events like these are an initiative of the TechSoup's Caravan Studios. Um, at TechSoup, we believe technology like smartphones, internet connectivity, training, and more have the power to serve our communities better. So today's presentation, we have Emily Swenson from Esri. She serves as a nonprofit program manager. She helps nonprofit organizations use GIS and spatial analysis to understand the ways that people and place shape one another. She believes that harnessing this understanding will allow us to take action, use maps to challenge inequities, affect policy change, and engage our communities. So thank you, Emily. We're so excited to hear your demo. Thanks so much, Allison. And I'm excited to kick off the webinar today. Uh, this is a topic that's at the center of my work here at Esri. So really quickly, Esri is a GIS technologies company. We're headquartered in Southern California. We were founded in 1969, so we've gone through many evolutions of technology, but our mission has always been to advance the science of GIS, to increase spatial literacy, and to empower organizations to harness what's the geographic approach uh, to solve some of the world's most complex challenges. So a quick refresher on GIS. Here's our world. And GIS, or a geographic information system, is a complete system that allows us to abstract and understand this world. Using a GIS, we can create, analyze, and share location data and information like models or imagery of the natural or built environment, political or administrative boundaries, districts, or other areas of interest, observations, project information, people, communities, and demographics. By understanding what's happening where, we can ask and answer important questions. We can identify patterns, we can find relations, locate optimal sites, and even make predictions. Fully harnessing the power of geography to make decisions. Over the years, the technological patterns for doing this have evolved from desktop workstations to servers, and now arguably the most exciting and accessible iteration, which is web GIS. That brings me to ArcGIS, which is Esri's core technology. Um, what is ArcGIS? It's a collection of tightly integrated spatial tools or applications that are designed for different purposes. In ArcGIS, a user has an identity, and through that identity, they access different applications in the cloud. I wanna walk you through a few of the most popular among nonprofit organizations and, and share some examples. So of course we have our, our desktop software, which is ArcGIS Pro, which is now integrated into the cloud. This is a robust set of spatial analytics tools and data management capacities. We have story maps. Story maps are a modern building experience to enhance a narrative with images, videos, and other mediums. Um, maps bring viewers closer to the mission and nonprofits are, I'm seeing nonprofits use them for their annual reports. For advocacy tools, there's several really sweet examples of policy change that's been affected by a powerful story map. Um, and for communicating information to their stakeholders. Uh, I've asked the TechSoup team to share a gallery link in the chat so you could take a look at some of the story maps out there, the featured story maps that may resonate with you. Um, you'll see they're immersive and mobile friendly and increasing the time that viewers spend um, in interacting with content. They average six minutes, which in today's world is pretty exciting. Next, we have dashboards. Uh, dashboards are for an operational view. What's happening where? Nonprofits use dashboards to update executives on the status of projects, um, to get real-time insight into things like disaster response, or to organize information and make decisions. I'm gonna drag over an example of a dashboard um, that's for a nonprofit organization to look at their fundraising information. So bringing data that perhaps lived in a spreadsheet or hopefully a database into a map because it has some spatial element, we'll immediately see, um, you know, see patterns ourselves. We're not even doing any analytics at this point. We're simply visualizing our donors um, and the map is dynamically updating. The dashboard's dynamically updating to tell us um, what's happening where um, if I zoom in on a given area, I'm able to drill into a specific donor detail. Uh, and that's just a really quick example of a way that a nonprofit can use a dashboard for development efforts. We have several tools for data collection, whether that's in the field or in a disconnected environment or for a survey out to members, volunteers, or stakeholders. 
This data can be immediately fed into things like the dashboard I just showed um, because of that location element. Next, we have Experience Builder. Um, Experience Builder re represents the ability to create and deploy different app templates. Um, this is a key to ArcGIS, um, its configurable nature. But in addition to configuration, um, ArcGIS is an open and interoperable platform um, that includes tools for developers to customize and, and build. And finally, and one of my very favorites is ArcGIS Hub, which, are, which is our community engagement platform and open data platform used to connect those that matter to an organization and organize people around initiatives. One of my favorite examples is Global Midwives Hub, which is an ArcGIS hub that's used to convene midwives around the world um, for things like information sharing. You'll see they have their own open data portal um, with spatial data around demographics, health coverage, mortality, and so forth, um, as well as a dashboard uh, embedded in their hub that's showing the associations and the members um, around the world. So really excited use. There's a lot more to, um, to a hub like this. They were commonly used in local government for engaging with community members, but nonprofits have been harnessing hubs for a myriad of, of uses. So those are just some of the applications you can choose to use through an ArcGIS subscription, um, all of them included with that, with that subscription. Now imagine all of your ArcGIS users at the organization are connected to the same portal. Um, to the same authoritative data, and you're all collaborating and sharing in real time. And that's how it works. Here's our apps again, just as a visualization. And in the center of those apps is the data. Data is at the heart of ArcGIS. Um, you may have data living in spreadsheets, like I mentioned before. But Esri also curates data for all of our ArcGIS users in what's known as the Living Atlas of the World. The Living Atlas of the World, and I'm going to pull up one more web example, is a robust collection of data from all sorts of authoritative sources, federal agencies like the census, um, live feeds from NOAA and NASA, on weather, there's lifestyle and business data, there's maps for policy, infrastructure and environment. But I wanted to orient folks to one of my favorite places here, which is our maps for public policy section. These are the, the apps where some of those data sets um, on the last page have been brought together in a tool that makes them easier to explore. So if I launch our Maps for Public Policy app, which all of this is absolutely free with no subscription required, so folks can begin checking it out and showing um, showing maps like that have already been created like this in your work today. What's really exciting is as soon as you have a subscription to ArcGIS, you can bring this data into your own work as well. So maps for public policy, a lot of the, the information organized around different uh, political interests. This speaks to our the depth and breadth of the Azure user community. We have hundreds of thousands of organizations with over 10 million active ArcGIS users across the public and private sectors. Because of what I was just sharing around the Living Atlas, and the space to collaborate around data, the size of this user community represents such great opportunity for informing positive practices across sectors. I'm really proud of the 14,000 nonprofits that we support, and we do that through our nonprofit program, which is a special program designed to get our offerings into the hands of organizations like yours uh, that are working on cross-cutting issues like those that you see on the screen. There are nonprofits aligned to every in industry that are innovating with GIS to improve their operations, their communications, and their impact. So just a little bit on the program. Um, like I mentioned, I get the privilege of being the manager for this program and have a small and passionate team of people that are um, working side by side with, with nonprofits um, to bring, bring their work to life. But our program is open to 501c3 organizations in the U.S. It's also global. So we have Esri distributors that are um, locally supporting uh, organizations in their regions based on their criteria. But the program includes deeply discounted access to our core technologies. I'm, I'm talking about a 98% discount on our ArcGIS subscriptions um, off of commercial prices. So it amounts to something like $100 in the US for a user. This also includes full access to the data through the Living Atlas for developer tools, robust free training, um, support, and that user community. 
I'd be remiss not to show you a map of the nonprofit user community um, today. And with that, I'd encourage you all to, to join us. The QR code there will take you to our website where you can read nonprofit success stories, see upcoming events, and apply to join our program. Please check it out. And I look forward to, to hearing from some of you. Thank you. And I'll pass it back. <laughs>